There's a place nestled in the beautiful hills and forests of Cumberland County that doesn't receive much attention. But people who have never visited the quaint community of Pleasant Hill are missing out on not only wonderful natural beauty, but also on the rich history that is told in the Pioneer Hall Museum. Right now we are in Pioneer Hall Museum in Pleasant Hill, Tennessee. Pioneer Hall was the second building uh, built for the Pleasant Hill Academy. It opened its doors in 1889 as a dormitory for the Academy students. Today it's a museum that honors the work of the Academy and of Dr. Mae Wharton and her medical work in this area. One of the remarkable stories that we tell is the story of Dr. Wharton and her medical work. She was assisted by her nurse, Alice Adshead, and her uh, friend, Elizabeth Fletcher. These three women did an extraordinary work in this area that will be long remembered. In 1917, the American Missionary Association appointed Edwin Wharton to be the principal of Pleasant Hill Academy. He came here with his wife, Dr. May Hannah Cravath Wharton, and she began an extraordinary pioneering medical work in this area. She established a hospital, a TB sanatorium, and uh, later moved the hospital to Crossville, where it's now the Cumberland Medical Center. Dr. May was really a tough woman not only uh, physically tough, but emotionally uh, strong. She walked through these ravines to the homes of the students and other people in this area to treat them, no matter when they called in the middle of the night. Uh, eventually, she had a horse and later a car, uh, but she was always on call. The Academy was begun in 1884 when the American Missionary Association sent the Reverend Benjamin Dodge and his family here to Pleasant Hill to establish a school and a church. The Academy operated from 1884 until 1947, and it had a great influence, a great impact on the people in this region. We have several artifacts here in Pioneer Hall Museum that are really extraordinary. One is a bell which hangs in the gazebo outside. That bell was cast by Paul Revere and Sons, and it has found a home here in Pleasant Hill thanks to one of Father Dodge's benefactors, J.J. Gregory, who bought the bell from the Marblehead, Massachusetts Congregational Church and had it shipped here where it hung in the Academy building for years. The other uh, item that I love is the carving by Tom Brown. It shows the Dodges coming up the plateau in an ox cart. They had to take the train from Maine to Sparta and then come up uh, a very strenuous trip up the plateau to reach Pleasant Hill. And Tom Brown has captured that in a beautiful cherry wood carving. We also have an arts and crafts emphasis because that was a strong emphasis of the art teacher, Margaret Campbell, who came to the Academy in 1922. And her interest developed into a, a cottage industry, Pleasant Hill Craft Shop, which lasted into the 1960s. We also stress life on the Cumberland Plateau. We have a kitchen and a general store and home and farm implements. Uh, which give people a glimpse of what life was like in the late 1800s. We are also a spot on the Tennessee Civil War Trail. We have a marker out front commemorating uh, a skirmish that may have happened just down the road. In 1868, Helen Graham Whiteman and her husband Amos Whiteman moved to this area. They bought land here because it was advertised as a beautiful environment with clean air and clean water, and today Pleasant Hill is just as attractive as it was then. The woods, the streams, uh, the creeks, all very, very beautiful. 
Pleasant Hill uh, is still a small village, only about 600 people. It's located 10 miles west of Crossville. It's a very beautiful area. It's worth the trip uh, from any part of this part of Tennessee. The museum is a great resource for this community. We want uh, the children growing up here to be proud of this legacy, proud of their uh, foremothers and forefathers who had a very difficult life in this area, but who were creative and hardworking and survived. Today, it's so important that we maintain our connections with the past. We have to know where we came from in order to know where we're going, and we have a great deal in this rich legacy here in Pleasant Hill to be proud of.